Real estate prices in some cities have escalated to new heights. There has been no stopping certain areas and the average individual has been put into fear about never being able to get into the market should they not buy in now. As a result, there has been a complete disaster waiting for these individuals once the central banks reverse course on this ultra low interest rate policy. Hold on to your seats. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at the real estate prices which have gone berserk in areas like Seattle and others. I want to get into the situation of Illinois first. Let's begin. Why Illinois is in trouble. 63,000 public employees with $100,000 plus salaries costing taxpayers a whopping $10 billion. So you have the situation in Illinois, which I have been covering, the pension crisis, the debt crisis, but yet it continues to expand. And we have a problem here that is not being addressed. Look at how many individuals are being compensated at such a high level when now there should be cutbacks. There should be austerity on the government, not on the people. All right, then you look at this graph here, or diagram is showing you the top 10 most highly compensated Illinois village and city managers. Look, this is definitely considerable. I want to get into this. Illinois is broke and continues to flirt with the junk bond status. It also gets into some other things I just talked about. The junk bond status, status may not mean much to you and I, but in the financial world, it is significant. It increases the yield, but it increases the risk by far and that's the really what happens here and uh, you look at areas like Greece and others this isn't a good thing okay it's, it's very clear about that whenever we open the books Illinois is consistently one of the worst offenders and it looks at the different individuals making these different salaries and they are not at something like the governor or, or such a high level we're talking about individuals who are making a lot of money and they just because they have some sort of management type status it's not a good sign that they are able to waste so much okay so let's get out of this and talk about seattle Seattle's real estate market, already the hottest in the country, is now seeing prices rise faster than at any point since the housing bubble last decade. Even some of the wealthy foreign buyers are apparently starting to get priced out. So let's take this for a moment. You had Vancouver, the prices rose dramatically, and then they implemented a foreign buyer's tax of 15%. That brought sales down, that brought prices down, but in short order, those prices came back up. You look at areas like Toronto, where they tried to bring in these little minuscule type rules and regulations, and it really didn't do that much. I mean, the prices have sort of stagnated, but they, the actual prices have risen, particularly on detached homes. Sales are stagnated because I believe that individuals are waiting to see what happens. Then you look at areas like Manhattan, like San Francisco, where the prices continue to rise and rise and rise. So that is one thing that we need to understand that as long as interest rates remain low, historically, you will have this happen. Now, even when the foreign buyers tax was implemented, what happened with those foreign buyers? Well, they just were seeking out a different market. And what happened, as I showed you here on this channel, was that the Chinese search engine, immediately after the foreign buyer's tax was implemented, the Chinese search engine all of a sudden showed the results that Seattle became the new hot market. So individuals from China started searching Seattle real estate right after the foreign buyer's tax. As an investor, you may not necessarily even care where you're buying it. You want it just, you know, a good area. You want the land to appreciate, the value to appreciate. And so whether it's in Vancouver or Seattle doesn't matter much to you as a foreign buyer. So that's what happens. They're not able to stop it from happening. One by one, all these cities will just continue to go up and up and up. Also, though, the, what I have found out is that in Vancouver, the the builders were actually offering to pay for that 15% tax. So they said, don't worry about the tax, we'll pay for it, just continue to buy your homes here. Just trying to keep this scheme going. 
Look at this. Single family home prices across the greater Seattle rose 13.3% in May compared to a year ago. And that's showing you that it's too hot. These prices have risen to such a level that cannot be sustained for too long. We're not talking about penny stocks here. We are not talking about uh, equities in general. We're talking about real estate. It's supposed to be a slow and steady ride. And that right there shows me that the market is just too hot. Why? Interest rates are very, very low historically. They have brought them up a little bit, but it will be at that point when they reach a certain level, maybe 4%, maybe 5%. But ultimately, what we're waiting for is that snap and that crack of, that, of the backs of individuals as they cannot pay when it's time to refinance. Let's look at this here. Might be a little hard to see, but Seattle tops the nation in home price growth. Okay, so let's look at this. When you see the national level being 5.6%, and that is high, 5.6% year over year, that would be great, considered to be excellent growth in real estate, depending on the area and this and that. But as a national level, that is. Then you look at the Seattle area, which has gone 13.3%. It's many times what the national level is. So you know that it's not just the nation as a whole. Seattle is being focused on. And that's the same situation in Canada, and I'm sure it's many other uh, cities and countries around the world are experiencing the same thing. Certain cities are escalating. Other cities are not doing so well. So that's it for that. I want to move on to this quickly looking at the Case Schiller Home Price Index, comparing that to Seattle being right up there at 111. Compare that to even San Francisco and New York City, which has, you know, in comparison, looks very small, but you know that all of these areas are definitely. Uh, very, very hot. You know that. You know that San Francisco and LA and New York, these markets have risen considerably over the years, but compared to Seattle, nothing seems to come close. So what are they going to do about it? Ultimately, nothing. They want that to continue. They want the heat. They want the construction. They want the materials. They want everything to continue to go. But the individuals who are ultimately buying these homes, not the foreign buyers perhaps, but individuals who are taking on debt, whoever that might be, those people are going to be hurt because interest rates may rise. Interest rates look like they're rising in the US, they look like they're rising basically everywhere, and it seems to be the policy that's going in place. If they bring the interest rates down, sure, everything can continue, but ultimately, people are priced out of the market. As an average individual, we are unable to afford that. Look at the average salary, look at their average house price, and you realize the truth. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, then I'd ask you to please give me a thumbs up. Remember that when you give me a thumbs up, it pushes these videos higher up into the YouTube search ranking. So I do appreciate that very much. If you want more free information, then I would ask you to check out my website. I've got a free e-course. I've got free eBooks. Definitely check it out at the moneygps.com.